Hi, here we are at the Lars Training Center. Anytime you're servicing a piece of equipment, it must be performed by a licensed contractor. Also, gas and electric must be shut off prior to servicing that equipment. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve Maruzzi. We're here at the Training Center. We're going to talk about the Lars Magnetherm or Bradford White Magnetech. With me today is Harry Papazian from New York City, Mercury Mechanical. He's going to assist us. We're going to take the top of the boiler off to be able to knock it down to get it into an elevator or low doorway. To start us, we're going to take the two doors off simply by putting a flathead screwdriver in, loosening up, and opening the doors. What we have here, we have pins that hold the doors in position. However, on the right hand door, there is a toggle switch on off switch, so we need to disconnect the switch. And now we can start by removing the pins. I'll start with the left hand door. Pins slide out of position. And I will take the pins and put them back in so we don't lose them. Okay, we'll remove the other door. We're going to remove the 5 16 screws. There's one in each corner of the side jacket. Next, we're going to take the two Phillips head screws out of the cross brackets. So now we've removed these cross brackets because we're going to take the top of the, the top jacket off first. So next, we're going to go around the back side of the boiler. So in removal of the top piece, we're going to remove the top jackets. That includes the, the top lid and both sides, and then this back panel where the filter box is located. There are multiple 516 screws, or you can use a Phillips head. This boiler is a 2 million BTU boiler. There are four across the top. There are three holding each side in, so we're going to remove those, and then we'll remove the top jacket and the side panels. So next, we're going to take the top jacket and push it back and lift it out. There are uh, groove locks for the sides that hold it in position. So I'm going to push back. We're going to lift it straight up and off. So here are the grooves that we had talked about. And the latches are up here on the side jacket of the boiler. So to remove the side jackets, we're going to pull those forward and out. So we're going to push forward, lift straight up. And now you can see the, lock, the latches on the side panels. And lastly, we're going to remove the filter box. Prior to doing that, we also have to remove the four Phillips head screws for the gas train. Now we'll slide this forward and move our rear panel and filter box panel. So now we have full access to the upper gas train and blower. Um, first off, we're going to start by removing the wiring for the blower, the gas solenoid, the air pressure switches, uh, and then we'll get into the gas train. The next thing we want to do is we want to take off the cover where all the wiring is to be able to expose it and disconnect the motor wire. Okay, please note, on three-phase wiring, you're going to have different labeling on your motors, okay, depending on voltages and size of the boiler. So, um, please make note, write down, for example, this one here where our black wire is coming in is going to T1 and T7, okay? So, make sure you note all of these, so that way when you go to put everything back together in reverse order, the rotation of the blower is correct. The next thing we want to do is we want to disconnect the wiring from the pilot solenoid that's under here. The next thing we want to do is we want to remove the tubing from the solenoid valve.
Next, we'll remove the wiring for the spark igniter. And we're going to remove the igniter box and the bracket that holds the pressure switches. Please make note of your color coding. So this is gray with a blue stripe, this is gray with a red stripe. Again, write all, all your wiring down on a piece of paper. <coughs> that way when you put it back together in reverse order, you won't have any mix-ups. So for this, now that we've removed the screws for the bracket, we can just let this hang down. Again, we're only looking to take the top gas train off for the boiler to get it through a low profile door opening or elevator. Okay, so next we're going to remove the high and low gas pressure switch wiring. We'll leave the gas pressure switches on the valve. We'll just dis disconnect the wiring. That way we can take everything out as one piece. So next we're going to take these clamps, these U-clamps off for that hold the gas train down. There's going to be three of them depending on the size of the boiler. One on the back side, one here, and one on this side over here. Okay, so those three clamps will come off. Okay, so next we have to disconnect the wiring to the gas valve. This Molex plug has one Phillips head screw uh, on this end, which I've already loosened, and we'll just simply pull it forward, okay, and that disconnects. So now all of our wiring has been disconnected, and we'll move forward with disconnecting the gas train. All right, so next we're going to remove the reference tubes to the Venturi. Um, these are vinyl, and we've marked these to that way we know which tube goes where. However, this was earlier production. Again, this is in the uh, training room. We do have the current production is aluminum tubing uh, on the gas line. So please mark your uh, references, and then you can remove these reference tubes. Now with the upper gas train disconnected and the braces that hold the gas train in place, you can take this all out as one piece um, if you decided to. Now a couple of things, we still have the blower bolted in, and this is a 2.0 2 or a 2 million BTU boiler, we have a union here. And the 1 million 6 and 4 millions will also have unions. The 3 million uh, and 2.5 do not have a union here. So you can, there's two ways of doing it. You can take it out all as one gas train, or on the gas valve, we have block unions. So you can take these four Allen screws off, and that union will separate from the gas valve, and you can take it apart in two pieces. Okay, with a pipe wrench, we've loosened our union. We'll disconnect the union. We're going to take the front half of the gas train out of position. Please don't forget to remove the reference tube from the bottom of the gas valve. On the three and a half and four million BTU boilers, we'll see the gas train's a little different. The gas line comes in on the left side. We are standing on the right side of the boiler. Comes through the gas train. Here's our union on the right side, then into the mixing station here. When removing the blower, you can disconnect the union and disconnect the blower from this 45 degree flange. We do not suggest taking the blower and 45 flange out as one piece. The reason is down inside is a pilot tube inside the burner. And if you're removing the top of the boiler and then putting it back together, if you bend that tube, you will have trouble lighting it. So, the recommendation is that you take the blower flange from this 45 in the union and take the mixing station blower and a little bit of gas train out as one. Then remove the, fl the 45 flange if needed. Okay, so here we're showing you three and a half and four million BTU with the pilot tube down inside the burner. The pilot tube is attached to the flange or the blower flange. Now if we lift up, we have to make sure that that pilot tube, when it goes back together, is tight against the back wall of the burner. One of the suggestions that was made was, once you put it back together, take a business card, you can fold it in half, put it in behind it just to make sure that pilot tube is tight to the inside burner. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take off all the nuts for the blowers, and we will remove the blower. Put the blower loose. We're going to lift this out of position. Okay, now with the boiler knocked down, you can relocate it to any room you need. Um, 
So what we're going to do is show you reassembly. Uh, we'll put the boiler back together, that way you can see the reassembly. Otherwise, just follow the reverse order of how you took it apart previously. questions, please contact the factory at 1-800-900-9276. Thank you.